Greetings friend, I will show you the best way to quickly solve this Sudoku without marks. Not only that, later in the video I'll give you some fun facts about our Friday featured setter that you will want to know. Click below to give it a go and with that, it's solving time. The first thing you want to see is that the way these little squares work. So you come down here and you go, okay, 2 and a 5 are not in this square and they can't be in these three cells. So 2 and a 5 have to be there. I'm actually going to mark that with some color just to remind us that this is a 2 5 hidden pair. It can't be anywhere else in the puzzle. And then if you get to 7 8 cutting across here, you'll notice that the 7 8 are limited to these two cells. Well, since we have an 8 already in row 4, we can solve this cell for an 8 and solve this cell for a 7. And what's kind of neat, since we know this is a 2 and a 5, this has to be the only remaining digit in the cell that we haven't talked about yet, which is a 1. So we can solve that for a 1. And I want to keep this just to kind of show you and remind you that this hidden pair is going to be very powerful. And without marks means I'm not going to put in Snyder notation or other marks. And I do the colors to help you see what it is I'm talking about with the hidden pairs. Um, normally when I solve without marks, I don't put any of the colors in, but I want to do this to help you out. Other neat thing here, and I love how Florian does this. This is going to be a great uh, tip here for you as well. See how there's a 7 and a 7 and an 8 right here? Okay, uh, we're going to play that here in just a second. So we got this 5, 6 coming across row 3. Got this 5 cutting across here. So we know that the 5 and 6 have to be in one of these two spots. And since the 5 is already in row 2, this is going to be your 5 and that's going to be your 6. Now remember the 7 and 7, 8? If you see this kind of pattern and you're missing 3 digits, you can solve all 3 right away. And the pattern is 2 to 3 in one column and then the other one's repeated in the second column. Because we know this is going to be a 7, 8, or 9. And since the 7, 8's already in that column 3, that's going to be your 9. Then this is going to be 8. And that's going to be your 7. You see this, I see this tip all the time. And it's really a nice way to solve three cells very quickly. Okay, got this 5, 6 coming down column 7. And so there's only two spots here for 5 and 6. So I'm going to make that a different color. And again, we'll use that here a little bit later on. Let's go with blue. Uh, and then we see what, what's cutting across here, kind of kind of the one and the sevens. All right, two spots for seven. The only place left for seven is right there. And then you know this is a two and a five, so this has to be a one or an eight. And since the one's already in row seven, we can solve this for a one, and we can solve that for an eight. You see how that hidden pair is helping us again? I love how Florian put this in the puzzle. And so I need to shift gears a little bit since we kind of worked with these little blocks of time, as you might call them. And let's look across here. What do we need here? A one, two, three, and a four. Well, hopefully you'll see there's a two, three, four right here. So this is now a naked single. So we can solve that for a one. And then if you look, you're looking for a two, three, four. I got the two and the four right here. So this actually has to be your three. And since the two is already right there, this is going to be your two, and that's going to be your four. So we were able to solve that whole row pretty quickly. And now, remembering that we have a two, five, naked pair here, let's look at row six now. Where can a three be in row six? So a three can't be here because of this three. Uh, can't be here because of this three, and it can't be here because of this three. So there's only one place left for a three. And we know with that hidden pair, and now it's actually a naked pair since we fill out the rest of the block, we can make some more solving there. And then what are we looking for across here? You already got the two and the five, so you're using four, six, and nine. You'll, you'll probably notice you can't do the four, six, and nine right there just yet, but we made some awesome solves, and we're gonna continue on making more solves like this in the puzzle. Let's look at these ones now. We got the one in columns four and six, and you got the ones in rows seven and eight. And something to know, if you have four of a digit going into, block you will be able to solve because the four will will cross out every other cell except for the one remaining cell where it belongs so you know you can put a one there with confidence and that's going to be really helpful to us so let's go over here and what are we missing you know i always want to look at where there's the most restrictions so in this case there's only three cells remaining uh, and this puzzle actually reminds me of another fun puzzle by florin i'll put that at the end it's also what we call gas level uh, generally approachable Sudoku, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be great. But we can see we need a 2, 4, and a 9. So I got a 4 and a 9 right here. So I can actually solve this cell for a 2. So that's another naked single. Can't solve the 4 and a 9 yet, but we did make, again, more progress. Love to see that in these puzzles. 
And so we can't go anything there. Let's look right here. You know, you got a five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need a one, two, three, four. So we have four missing cells. Let's look right here. This is kind of cool. I look how Florian did this. This is a one, two, and a three. So we know that's got to be a four. That's kind of easy to see, right? And then this one. So that would be a two or a three. Okay, can't do anything there. And then this would be two, four. We need a, a one or a three. And so we can't solve that. But I liked how he put that in there. And so now with the fours, we can kind of go to cross hatching here. Columns four and five, columns seven and eight, all contain a four. We know we can solve for four right there. Nice. And so now let's look across here again. Remember, this is that two and a five. Where can a three go here in row seven? Well, it can't be in those two spots. It can't be here because of this three, and it can't be here because of this three. So we know we can solve for three right there. And we know this is a two and a five. So what we're missing is a six and a nine. Can't solve the six and a nine yet, but you see again, using those hidden pairs really gives us a lot of progress. And I love how we were able to keep on making the solves in the puzzle. And now we can make a pretty cool solve here. We're gonna use a pointing pair. So you see how the two cuts down column six and then cuts across row eight. It means the twos are limited to these two spots. Okay, and if I colored that, I'll do it really quick as a yellow, that means a two has to be somewhere here in block eight, but can only be in row column, excuse me, column four, which means a two can no longer be here. That means we can actually solve this cell for a two. So I'll get rid of this color, remove that. And before I put that two in, I do want to give you my fun fact about Florian Wortman. Florian Wortman got into setting by watching Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, he wondered how he could set the puzzles themselves, heard about F puzzles, the rest is history. F puzzles is a common app for making these puzzles. And then also, he gets inspired by solving puzzles, watching others solve puzzles. Sometimes he just plays around the app and finds some cool log that he wants to share with you. I always find it fascinating how the setters got into solving and how they get inspired with their puzzles. So let's get back here to the solve. That's going to be a two. That's going to be a five. And that's going to be helpful for us. So we're going to remove these colors because we no longer need that. And now, since we did a five here and a five here, we can actually solve this cell for a five. And as soon as I get out of color mode, we'll make the solve. Okay, so we solve for five right there. And so that's kind of nice. So now we're making quite a bit of restriction here in this puzzle. And so what we want to look here is like, what is going on here? We got a three, six, nine. Can't solve the rest of the three, six, nine. What do we have here? Is a seven or an eight? Because all the other digits are right there. So we know that seven or eight. And so we know what has to be up here, three, six, nine. Well, I got a three right here and three here. So this is actually what we can solve for a three. And then six, nine, there's a six right here. I can solve that for six and solve that for a nine. So we can again make you know, that kind of progress pretty quick. And then we come down here and we know that this now has to be a two or an eight. Well, I have an eight right there. So here's your eight and here's your two. And now the nine here is gonna help us solve this nine and help us solve this six. And you see, you kind of hit this critical mass point, the point where, okay, I'm going to I'm solving quicker uh, because I have so many cells and digits filled in. You see, we're starting to kind of get past that point where the solving is going to become a lot quicker now. And your intended solve path, you can kind of take some other variations because there's so much easy solving to do right here. All right. Nine, nine means this has to be a nine right there. And then with these two nines, this nine, I'm going to go to cross hatching because that's always going to be my quickest way to solve. To two nines in rows four and five, this nine, column nine means this has to be a nine right here. We saw this nine, and remember with working memory, that was a four, right? Because we had a four nine missing. I didn't have to go and check all that over again. And now with these two fours, this has to be a four right here. And this was called a full house. And so I have eight digits filled in. I only have one remaining. So that's a full house for that row, which means I can guarantee I can solve that cell for a six because that's the only digit remaining. And it reminds me, if you haven't checked this out, I have a single cell solving method for you which goes through a lot of the logic I just showed you here, the naked singles, the hidden singles, the pairs, the pointing pairs, how to use all that, you know, how many cells are remaining to be filled out, how to use that logic to solve puzzles quickly. I'll put a link to it. Please check it out. All right, after we filled out that six, now we know we can solve this because this is a five to six. The six here means this has to be your five and that has to be your six. So let's take away that color mode and now we can move on with more solving. Since the five's coming up here, the only place left for a five, and block six is right there. And again, gotta get out of that color mode. I do that 
just to see if you guys notice. All right, we got a one and we have a seven remaining. There's my one. So this has to be your one. That has to be your seven. Remember, this is a seven or eight. So there's your seven and there's your eight. Then we come back here. We have two full houses now because of the two rows. And so what are we missing is it looks like an eight, which I can put right there. And then we're missing a four, which I can put right there. So we finished all that great solving. Now you want to come back and go, okay, where's my other neat restrictions? Let's look right here. There's only two cells remaining in row eight, a six and an eight. I got an eight here. So this means this has to be your eight and that's going to be your six. And now I got my three eights. So I don't even worry about that. But how about my six is six and a six. And this six means there's only one place left for a six in block four. Awesome. And now I'm going to look here and go, you know, what am I missing over here? I only have two cells remaining, a one and a seven. Well, here's my seven. So here's your one and there's your seven. And now I got these two ones. I got this one. I can definitely solve this for a one. Creates my full house. I can solve that for a three. And now I'm going to look here and go three, three. And I can solve for three here. What else am I missing? It looks like a two and a five. I got my two there. So here's your two and here's your five. Awesome. I don't have a two here. I just solved for a two. So I know I can put a two right there. And our last digit is a five. You need to check out this other flooring video if you want to solve Sudoku without marks even quicker. Thank you so much, Florian, for being my Friday feature setter. You are amazing. Join the Smarty Party. Click on the membership link below. I have a puzzle pack out now that you need to take advantage of. And thank you so much for watching.